Good morning, San Diego. On this championship Monday, we are out here at Vieja. San Diego State playing for the national championship against UConn today. Aztec Fever, man, it is going on. We will have all the details coming up from here in just a few. Diane. This is Good Morning San Diego. Good morning, San Diego. I'm Lauren Finney. I'm Paul Rudy. Today is Monday, April 3rd. And what an April 3rd it will be. Coming up. Today's the day. Yes. This is exciting. It really is. It's kind of like a storybook finish for the Aztec a chance Saturday to avenge night. The 2000... My goodness. I mean, there's so many storylines here. And, I know. And what it means. You can just see how starved this town is for a championship. You know, just to say we're the In best. In any sport. Yeah, I, and, I, and I know I say that, and I, I, I'm sure I rile the San Diego soccer fans because they have had this championship lineage, but that is sort of a, that's not, that, that that's kind of a San Diego thing, and not everyone knows about the soccer. So everybody knows about college basketball. Everybody knows about the Padres. Can you imagine if we had two moments like this in one We've just year? been marching towards this, and 2020, it was supposed to be our year and then to see you know with the pandemic and how it affected things and now we're you know mountain well, west well some would argue the pandemic helped keep this roster together and and give the give the aztecs a sizable advantage in that they have this very mature solid close-knit close yeah close -knit you, team. Could, you could make that argument for sure well so. i know coach jones will make that argument he made that argument two three weeks ago when he, when, when we're all started all this and he's been spot on as has jim brogan we'll talk to dj gay who i believe is in houston hoping to see his alma mater avenge that mm -hmm. when they had the uh 2011 when they had that yukon victory stolen from them so by the referees or in fact, I believe. If you wait, excuse me, can we talk to DJ real quickly? All right, uh, uh, joining us right now from his Houston hotel room is DJ Gay. DJ, you heard us though with the preamble. Uh, are you feeling those emotions? Oh yeah, oh yeah. The goosebumps have not stopped. Um, it's 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 been it's been amazing out here in Houston. As many Aztec fans that are out here uh, filling up the city, it's. It's uh, words, words can't express what's, what's really going on out here. You have to be here to, to, to feel it. Well, uh, you, you heard us talking about UConn. Do you remember that moment back in 2011 when uh, uh, the referees took certain victory, snatched it away from you, and, and what led to the Huskies national title, if, if you recall? Oh, yes. I mean, there's definitely uh, parts of that game that stick out more, more, more than others. Um, you know, but it's it's... It's refreshing to know that that this team has a has, we, we have another shot at it um, against against UConn. I think this is going to be a great storyline, another David versus Goliath type of story, you know, story there. But uh, I think this Aztecs team have has the pieces to get it done. Yeah, this is a real life real life version of Hoosiers. For those who are familiar with the movie, I mean, you guys are Hickory. And UConn is that big team from Indiana who's not expected to uh, even sweat against you. And boy, I'd rather be in the, you know, I'd rather be in your locker room. I, I think with low expectations here, you can uh, you could slay the slay the giant, could you not? Yeah, and and, and I think um, you know a lot of people are are, are viewing it that way, but uh, you know, being around the team and 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 knowing their player personnel, uh, they don't feel like underdogs at all. And I think they have proven that uh, no matter what game in, they're going to find a way to keep it close and find a way to win. So, uh, you know, I hope UConn, you know, underestimates underestimates this team. But how, how can you after right. the, the, the performance that they put on uh, through this tournament? DJ, can you speak to this? I've brought it up a couple times now, and I, I want to know if there's any credence to it. Is there a new business model now for building a championship basketball program back in the day, pre-portal, you would just get as many great, like, I remember Kentucky had all those five-star guys, and they would, the promise was you play one or two seasons here, and you go to the NBA, and that was, they just cycled through, and, and they just brought stud athletes after another. Dutcher's doing it a different way in that he's built this nucleus of guys who have stuck around for a while, and you build up this very mature team. Maybe they're not the greatest players, but they're certainly really, really good, and they're better because they stay around and play together for so much longer. Is that going to be the new way 
to take on all these schools that can recruit so well? Um, the, you know, the, the story that's going around with, uh, with coaches now uh, is that you win with men. And uh, San Diego State has, has you know, has uh, showcased that at, at, at all levels with their professionalism on the court, um, how close they are with their brotherhood, how they, 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 they may make a mistake, but they don't hold their head down about it. Um, they love seeing each other win. And I mean, let's, let's face it, this is a older team. Uh, you got guys on there, 22, 23, maybe older on the team. So uh, having a mature group like this, it, it, shows, it shows everybody that, you know, if you if if you stay, we will win, and um, and I think that is what uh, recruiting is is gravitating towards. Yes, the transfer portal is at an all time high, uh, but it's all about getting the right pieces and, and and recruiting guys that put winning above everything else. Um, I think we we saw the last couple of games that you know Matt Matt Brad Matt Bradley was on the bench. The last, you know, the last play of the game for the, uh, you know, the last game, two games before he he was on the bench for the last part of the game, and and when they won, he celebrated like he made the game winning shot. And it, just, <laughs> it just just goes to show once again, uh, building a, a an older, mature team that that understands the, the the culture and what it means to be a part of the team is is the key to success. You bring up Butler's shot. He's had two of those this year, and I know you've had your share of game-winning moments. Does that ever leave you when you're when you're 85 years old? When you there's no there's no taking that moment away from you, no regardless of what happens tonight. No, no, no. And I, I think I, Butler Butler deserves his his picture somewhere on that campus for for for, for, for what he did. Um, truly amazing. Um, you know, to make a game winner, we all dream about it, but to do it on a, on, a, on a national stage, to go to the national championship, what the only way it can get better is if you did it again tonight. <laughs> and on that note, we'll call it a conversation. DJ, you've been so good to us. Thank you so much. You're, uh, maybe, when do you leave? Do you leave tomorrow? Tomorrow. Well, maybe before you leave, we'll do it one more time as we talk about what, what's going on as a party that raged all night long as the Aztecs upset UConn. So uh, until then, thank you so much, and have a safe day, okay? All right, thank you, too. DJ Gay, everybody. SDSU is set to take on UConn tonight for the national championship title. Yes, yeah, so KUSI Ed Lenderman is live in Dulcero with former SDSU men's basketball coach Michael Bronkner with more. This has got to be so exciting for him, too. Hi, Ed. Hey, Ed. Well, it is. He greeted us at the door, and good morning early. I always wanted to say somebody was in the house. Michael Bruckner's in the house. <laughs> it's his house. Good morning. Good morning, Ed. How are you today? I am. Uh, I'm. I'm so nervous. I could. I, I. don't know what to do. I. I couldn't sleep last night, and you know, and and I get nervous when I know the president's coming to town, or I've got to interview the senator on something, and I. Uh, you know, he may, he may be from New York, and how much do I know with what he's here at San San Diego for a for a conference or something? So I better be up to speed. I'm a little nervous, you know, on national TV, and and yet this this is a different this is this is different nerves. And then you wake up to this. Yes. And, and, and I started to say when we got to the door, he greets us and he goes, "Look at this." And then, tell me about this. You know, a lot of times they talk about getting on the top of the fold, right? But look at this. This is the whole front page of our San Diego Union Tribune. I don't know if anybody slept last night if you're an Aztec fan. And, and just think of those young men in Houston right now, and those coaches right now. They're just getting ready for this big game tonight. But, my, what a time for San Diego. All right. A little background here, because a lot of us think we know something about basketball, but we weren't the youngest assistant coach in the NBA's history with the Detroit Pistons and Dick Vitale and Smokey Gaines, and he comes to San Diego. Diego and he's an assistant coach and then he goes on to be one of our most respected community leaders longtime head of the uh, Jackie Robinson YMCA then you went with another agency organization for a year and now you're retired and I'm going M Michael Bruckner's never gonna retire no I'm consulting right now but yes it's been a joyful journey for sure and, and, and remember now I came to San Diego in 1980 to coach basketball at San Diego State with the hopes and dreams that we would be exactly where the Aztecs are right now and here's a trivia question for you who was our point guard in 1980 at San Diego State? 
Tony Gwynn. Yeah, absolutely, you got the answer right. So just think about all the Aztec fans watching right now who've been going to games for a long time in Peterson Gym and the sports arena and now Viejas Arena and have watched all those players over the years with the hopes and dreams that someday we would be in the Final Four. And I don't think even with all the things that have happened and the craziness, craziness and last seconds and 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 a, a mature team, but still, it is, it's, it's been rocking and oh, by the way, since 19, since the 80s. And, and, and I truly believe great teams win close games. And that's what we've been doing. And, and we've yet to play that perfect game, which is going to happen tonight. Okay. You say it's going to happen tonight. Yes, I do. And, and, and just look at Matt Bradley for one. Just think about it. Against Creighton, he scores two points. And then, and then the other night, he scores 21. You know? Got out of the box early, and that's going to be important tonight. By the way, we are, we are at some point going to talk strategy here. We're going to talk about why he's so confident as we uh, spend the morning. Uh, but we certainly want to get some history out of the way. Uh, how are you? Are you feeling comfortable today? I absolutely am. And, and, and for the reason being is that I know San Diego State has the, the, the capacity, the competency, the confidence to win and, and do the job. And, and we've played everybody. I know a lot of folks, we, what we can't match with Connecticut right now is their history. They've been to four championship games, four, and guess what their record is? Four and oh, they've won every one of them. And they're good. They are good. This may be their best team. I don't know about that. They've lost eight times this year. So it, it, I don't know if it's their best team, but I know they're a good team. They're a very good team. But so was Florida Atlantic, and so was Creighton, and so was every other team that got to the dance this year, and we're still standing. It's all fallen into place, hasn't it, ladies and gentlemen? Okay, we are going to con uh, continue to visit with uh, one of the icons of community service here in San Diego. But, oh, by the way, he knows his hoops as well. So we're going to break this down as the morning goes along. He's not nearly apparently as nervous as the rest of us <laughs> but we'll be back and visit with you all later we're in the house of michael bruckner <laughs> exciting thanks ed looking forward to uh, talking strategy with him later this morning right now we have to get a check of our ringing money. all weekend with the cheers from Aztec fans. yes ksi's ali wagner's live at Vieja house arena getting fan reaction on what was well, what is the biggest mo moment in school history? I would have to believe, is it not? I mean, yes, yes. So, uh, on, on like not even a question. Yeah. That is the, going to be the best moment in school history as far as sports is concerned. Um, it is going to. I, I can't even imagine being a student here right now because. The excitement when I went to school here and just making the tournament, that was how long ago that was, um, was a big deal. And now to see them in the championship game is just unbelievable. And Dan Cruz has been our go-to Aztecs fan uh, for this run. And I said, Dan, uh, I said, I know you were busy yesterday, but you were like, I'll wake up at 2 in the morning if I have to to root for the Aztecs. Yeah, I mean, I'll get up at 5 a.m. if the Aztecs are going to be in the championship game, Allie. So, no, this is our, our real-life Hoosiers moment, right? I mean, every single Aztec alumni, every student is going to remember where they were on Saturday night watching the San Diego State Aztecs win in the Final Four. Just an incredible experience, and uh, we're so excited. We're playing in the national championship game. We're playing with house money. All the pressure's on UConn. The Aztecs can win. I, I think that that is how a lot of us who have followed this entire tournament, it seems like everybody has picked the other team against San Diego State, and yet we keep surprising. We keep surprising and we keep playing tough. I mean, this is a, a great program that San Diego State coach Brian Dutcher has built. This is a university that has achieved so much in the last 20 years of winning and to see it all on the national stage, to see us win in that dramatic fashion. Yesterday I was up at the Carlsbad 5000. All of the Aztecs gear. You have never seen so many hats and shirts and people running in gear like you and I are wearing. Uh, it just made you so good. It felt so good to be an Aztec and uh, I'm so excited for the kids in the program and can't wait to watch the game tonight. I think that that's been really cool. As you've gone around town uh, the last few days, the amount of Aztecs alumni who all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, you're an Aztec? I didn't know that. It like, I feel like everybody is coming out and supporting. A ton of Aztec pride, a ton of community pride. The city used to get that way when the charges were good, right? You'd see everybody at the grocery store wearing their lightning bolts, but now everybody's wearing red, we're wearing black, we're cheering for the Aztecs, and you know, hey, 
even if tonight doesn't go our way, and I don't want to suggest that, we've gotten this far. It's been an incredible run. It's just so great for our community, and, and Saturday night was just something that was truly special. What do you think happens to this town if the Aztecs pull it off and win? Oh, there'll be thousands of people right here in front of Viejas Arena. All the kids are back from spring break, so the energy and enthusiasm on campus is going to be amazing. You're just going to see Aztec fever. It's going to be pandemonium, and uh, I'm so excited. We can't wait to watch the game. We're going to have people coming over to my house. I'm like, I don't want too many people because I want to watch the game. Yeah. So the true fans, we're not in it for the big parties, but all the bars, all the restaurants. That was one of the coolest videos was at the Padres game yeah. at Petco Park when they showed the winning shot, uh, and everybody in the stadium erupted. And so, yeah, it's going to be pandemonium in San Diego tonight if the Aztecs could pull off the unthinkable. Oh, I'm so excited. My gosh, I, I literally all day long, all you're going to get from me is go Aztecs. So, Dan, thanks for getting up early with us. Guys, we'll send things back over to you. Wearing my original shirt from when I went here, it has been my lucky shirt this entire tournament. So, I'll send it back over. Well, good. Then don't take it off. <laughs> Dan no. brought up the movie Hoosiers. Yeah, it, that's your... The, the that's, locker room uh -huh. scene. Where I the, knew you'd like that. The prayer beforehand. <laughs> where, and David reached into his bag and grabbed a stone and slung it and struck the Philistine on the head. Mm -hmm. And he fell. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I see that scene, I cry. I swear, I just... <laughs> we talked about that a lot. Yeah. Give a golf clap for that. I'll give uh, a golf clap for that. Well, thanks, Allie. Thanks, Allie and Dan. Dan, Dan, Dan. for getting up early. <laughs> With I love you guys. Multiple days, I know. <laughs> so while the men's battle takes place tonight, Ellis, you can celebrate the women's win. Boy, this With is... SDSU good. taking on UConn. Uh, we're going to be talking about it all morning long. Tonight, we're covering all the details for the big event. KUSI's Ed Lenderman is live in Del Cerro with more on tonight's game and the hoop shots that uh, that got us here. This is exciting. Hi, Ed. Hey, Ed. A little run group with the N before the K, Ed. Uh, Longtime community activist here. You know him from all of his great work at the Jackie Robinson YMCA. But did you know, back in the day, he was an assistant basketball coach, both with the Aztecs, uh, Detroit, youngest uh, coach in uh, NBA history with the Detroit Pistons. So this man knows his basketball. And we're going to talk about what has to happen tonight in Houston for the Aztecs to pull off what has been a magical season. We'll talk about it straight ahead with Mr. Brunker. But first, here's Allie. And we're hanging out out here at Viejas where, yes, you are feeling that Aztecs excitement. We will tell you how fans are reacting. Also, get ready for their big watch party. We'll have that and more when Good Morning San Diego returns. Welcome back. It is 6.33. Well, after a series of uh, championship caliber games, now it's for all the marbles. This is it. KUSI's Ed Lenderman is live in Del Cerro with former SDSU men's basketball coach. Ed, we have to know, how is Michael Brunkner going to enjoy tonight's game? At home with nobody else around or throwing a party? <laughs> He's not throwing the party, but he is going to a home, and we are going to keep that alive. Good morning, guys. This is so cool. We're just chilling here in the home of Michael Brunker. We gave you all the history at the beginning uh, because, uh, as you uh, as you noted, I hope you saw us at 6, we kind of went over his uh, basketball resume as opposed to his community activist uh, resume. And now let's get into the nitty-gritty. But they asked me, you're going to a watch party tonight at a home just to keep this alive because that's where you've been going every time the Aztecs play in the postseason. Absolutely. And, and the home we're going to is that of Ken and Margie Blanchard, who, uh, you know, have been in San Diego for quite some time as well. Uh, and, and Ken used to coach basketball at Cornell and used to play in high school. And so uh, both are in their 80s. That We're having big fun watching the game, and, and we're going to keep that streak alive. Okay. Well, th this man has always had a calm demeanor, but <laughs> I don't know quite how you're so calm here. But you're you're very confident about tonight, and tell me why. For a number of reasons. I think San Diego State has the 
<laughs> Go ahead. An experience to win it and, and win it all. And, and they've been doing it all season long. So this has been a team that's been built to play together. They're a great team. They've won close games up to this point. But, I, but I've long believed that you have to have some elements to make that happen. You need a secretary of defense. And that, they not only have one, but they have many. And that really epitomized itself in the last game when they held that seven-foot center from Florida Atlantic to five points when he'd been uh, just, you know, just really been a problem with everyone else. He'd be chairman of the boards, and San Diego State's really been dominating the boards against a lot of great teams, including number one ranked Alabama, you know, who had seven footers as well. So when you talk about UConn and their size and their quickness, everything they've done up to this point has been excellent. You need an executor. And we talked about Matt Bradley earlier, but I mean, only two points the prior game, and now he scores 21 against Florida Atlantic. That was epic. Minister of Motivation, that's my man, a rook right now. He's a, he comes off the bench and makes stuff happen. I've never seen a player for a long time dive on every loose ball that makes it happen, and, and, and he made an impact. And then finally, you need a leader of the pack, and we saw that with Butler the other day. I mean, how he led that team to that victory and just did so many great things. But we have so many players on San Diego State where every different night is someone else stepping up. And they're getting it done. Okay. Every night, somebody else has stepped up. I think, and you've certainly talked about this, and we alluded to it over the weekend when he visited with us. You've been on the air more than I have. Uh, we, we need everybody stepping up tonight. This is a big team, and it's from the Big East. So they, they know how to bang, too, okay? The Big East is a, is a tough conference, and they've got some they got thoroughbreds, and they got a pedigree. We need everybody tonight. But right now, this is the last ah, game. Ah, and so right now, the one game remaining, and, yeah. and State is yet to have have that perfect game and so what's going to happen when everybody hits that peak where everybody every shot you go in goes in every free throw you, you you stand at the line and you make them all and what happens all those shots around the basket if we had made half the shots we missed around the hoop in the paint against florida atlantic we would have won about 20. yeah yeah so, so tonight we we that happens it's going to happen because it's the <laughs> last game so there's no wait until next year many of the players on this team this is their last is game playing for san diego state university don't you think they want to go out in style all right you've been watching connecticut i want to break that down a little more when we visited at seven but he's He's confident everybody's going to play well tonight. We're not going to get down by 14 uh, early in the uh, first half. And as gosh knows, we know how to hold it together no matter what is going on. I will give him credit for that. And that's going to stand us very well tonight against the Yukon Huskies. We're in the house of Michael Brunker. And we are very, very pleased to be visiting with him on a day that, uh, oh, I'm, we're so nervous. I don't know how he's doing it. Back to you. <laughs> yeah, the butterflies are definitely there. But, uh... you know, I, I don't feel like getting to the title game, Aztecs have already won. They have exceeded expectations by such a, such a long... Yeah, but as a coach, I would think that you can't have them thinking that. Yeah, but I mean... Right? Leave all the marbles I'll on the table. I play loose. Play loose. I, I, I think the pressure's all on UConn, but we'll talk more about that as the uh, as the morning wears on. Because I believe now we're going right back out to as San Diego State, right? Yes, we are. Ali Wagner is there ahead of the big, uh, exciting watch fest tonight. Hi, Ali. Hi, you guys. Yeah, I think um, that if you're the Aztecs, you feel like you haven't been picked to win this whole tournament. So I saw somewhere where it was like, hey, are they going to, does Coach Dutcher let them hear that? And it's like, there's an ex there's a experience factor, an age factor. And so I'm sure that they hear that chatter and they believe that they are the best. They've shown that they are the best and that's the way it's going to go. So uh, here at Viejas Arena, they open at five o'clock for the watch party. They have consistently gotten more and more people who have come. I have a feeling that tonight will be the case as well. I've definitely seen more students walking around today wearing their red and black, getting prepped for tonight's big game. You can feel that excitement just being on campus. Um, as we saw the streets around San Diego State uh, getting filled after they won on Saturday. So uh, there's definitely a little bit of that uh, just 
excitement in the air even early this morning as students are heading to the gym here. Uh, so I think obviously this is going to be one of the places to be. A lot of students will come to watch together um, as they have been doing and as you've seen them storm the court and really the electricity in the air. There's a number of students we've seen. The show has quite um, a showing as you will say uh, out there at Houston. Um, so it is definitely a lot of fans in Houston but a lot of fans out here at San Diego State as well on the Mesa uh, where it is really going to get crazy if they win this thing that is for sure um, but tonight this is one of the places that you can come you can watch you can be uh, wear your red and black uh, proudly and, and really root on our team as all of San Diego is doing we'll send things back over to you oh we hope that scene is repeated tonight sure do <laughs> mm -hmm. all right thanks Allie. Bigger, Thank you, Allie. bigger and better mm -hmm. yes oh man they'll break down the, the goal pole or the goal post they'll break down the baskets if uh if they win. Hey, uh, still ahead, we're talking uh, Aztecs all morning long. After the break, the CEO and head coach at Balboa School, Zach Jones, is going to be joining us to weigh in on tonight's NCAA matchup. It is 6.43. Welcome back to Good Morning San Diego. San Diego State is hours away from facing off against UConn in the NCAA championship. Here to give game predictions and some talk on the Aztecs it is head coach and CEO at Balboa School, Zach Jones. Zach, good morning. Hey, Lauren, how you doing? Good morning. I am well. Uh, this is exciting. Are you, are you nervous this morning? How are you feeling going into tonight's game? Not really nervous. I think that uh, we've been prepared. We knew that... Uh, if we could get past this last game, what would be in front of us? Uh, feel like UConn's a good, a, a very good team, but I think we're well equipped to handle them. Uh, I think today most of the guys are really focusing on winning their matchups, which is going to be very, very important. Uh, and if we can do that, we'll give ourselves a chance to bring home a national championship. Well, now you were on record Friday saying that we are going to see an Aztec win. We heard from Jim Brogan earlier this morning. He predicted a 67-63 Aztec win. What's your prediction for tonight's uh, score? Yeah, I, it could be more in the 70s. I think something more along the lines of 72-73. Uh, it's going to be a one- or two-point game, and it's going to go down to the stretch. And it might even go down to the point to where whoever has the ball, the last possession, will win the game. How do how do we match up against UConn? I mean, UConn's going into this. This is their fifth time, and they've already got four wins in their belt. They're not used to losing at this level of play. This is the first for San Diego State getting to this level. How, how do we match up? How does that change the mentality of the game for the Aztecs? How do you go into this? Well, realistically, Lauren, you're right. They do have uh, some experience of being there before, but those were with past players. You know, today's players have not been in this environment before, just as well as our, our guys at San Diego State have not been in this environment before. Um, so that, you can take that part out of it because neither one of these, these teams have been here before, these particular teams. So it's new for everybody that's participating in this game today. Again, I think we have to make sure we win our matchups individually, but I think the key is going to be how well our bench play uh, goes today. You know, we've been playing exceptional off the bench, rebounding, defense, scoring, and that's going to be a key because uh, UConn has a really, really strong bench. Mm -hmm. uh, they're able to carry their team uh, during certain times of the game, give their starters a, bit, a chance to rest. And so our bench is going to have to win that matchup tonight as well to give us a chance to win the national championship. I don't know if you were watching us earlier, but uh, we have one of our reporters, Ed Lenderman, at the home of Michael Brunkner, who, of course, was one of the coaches while you were playing there at SDSU. Uh, <laughs> you, I wonder, as, as a former player, I mean, sometimes on paper you can think you have everything you need for a national championship and it doesn't work out, or you think this is the year we're going in undefeated and it doesn't work out. What do you feel as a former player and – I mean, is this is this kind of you're on the field as you know you're on the the court with them tonight as well? Yeah, yeah, I feel it, and you, you know it's it's good to see Mike out there. He was uh, our assistant coach when I was playing in San Diego State as well, and he's the one that actually got me into coaching. He he called it out uh, very early in my career playing in San Diego State that he says that you know one day you you're going to be a coach, and so I ended up getting into the coaching Aww. round. Of him. <laughs> 
Uh, we started some youth programs together in San Diego as well to be able to give back to the community. So we have a very long history and, and a very good history. He's been a mentor of mine as well. So it, it's good to see him on and talking basketball. But as a player, you know, what we, we're we looking at this as an opportunity, right? We don't think about all the outside noise right now. Right now, we're focusing in on what the job is, what we need to get done, how we need to play, how we need to win our matchups, because I think that's going to be a key. But for me, on the outside, looking in as a former player, I'm thinking the exact same way. I want to see, make sure our guys are ready to play, ready to win those matchups. You know, defense has been been our calling card. When I said this in the very beginning, offense wins games, but defense wins championships. And so we can come in tonight and kind of grind UConn down a bit, uh, you know, be physical with them, and then take them to that last three, four minutes. I'm, I'm looking for us to bowl well. And, and as you know, Lauren, I, I called it very early. <laughs> yes, you did. They had a chance to, to get this done. So, uh, last question, Coach Jones. You're, you're 10 minutes from the game. You can hear the crowd rumbling. You're in the locker room. The guys are quiet. They're focused. They're on, they're on their knees listening. What do you say to the San Diego State Aztecs as you take the court tonight? Hey, that's... Let's play as hard as we can. Let's have fun, right? But let's leave it all on the floor because this is our last game of the season, uh, last game of the season for a lot of our seniors. And so let's go out here. Let's enjoy this. Let's have some fun, but let's go out here and play as hard as we can. Let's play for one another. Let's have each other's back, and let's go win this thing. I like it. We'll leave it with that. Zach Jones, thank you so much for the time, all leading up to this and all the uh, wonderful predictions that have come true so far. Let's hope tonight's prediction is one of them as well. Thank you so thank you, much. Mom. Thank you, Mom. <laughs> Go Aztecs. Go Aztecs. Coming up next on Good Morning San Diego, we're going to be checking back in with Diane, who is on on today's Take forecast. Take a look at some history here, and we'll show you this picture of uh, this uh, still fine-looking man. He is Michael Brunker. Michael has been a fixture in our community for so long, it's, it's hard to remember as uh, the head of the Jackie Robinson YMCA. But back in the day, he knew his basketball, and he still does. Former Aztec assistant, former Detroit Pistons assistant coach. Yeah, he's got a pedigree. And we'll talk to him about the big game tonight. But one more time, here's Alan. Good morning. We're hanging out here at Viejas Arena because, yes, the Aztecs, the excitement is going on. There's going to be a big watch party going on here on the Mesa. We'll have all the details coming your way in just a few. Good morning, Diane. Go Aztecs. All the this is Good Morning San Diego. Good morning, San Diego. I'm Lauren Finney. And I'm Paul Rudy. Today is... Championship Monday, April 3rd. In this hour, nothing but basketball conversations. I'll be talking to Full Hoops One, the guy who knows the prep and college scene better than anybody uh, on this side of the Rocky Mountains. Aaron Bergen will be joining us in just a bit. All right, and I'm talking with Chris Ello from 97.3 The Fan. And uh, from, you know, this is uh, exciting, but you think about the history, everything that's led up to this moment. I just wonder, uh, with with Tony Gwynn, you know, we always focus on him with baseball, right? But such an important basketball player for SDSU. I'm sure I'm he is wonder. looking down with uh, looking down with fond affection at his alma mater as a. Uh, yeah. You know, I saw pictures of his son celebrating, and boy, I just thought, you know, what must be going through. How a cool yeah. moment! Like, yeah. you never think you're celebrating with basketball, because yeah. uh, we've been so focused on a championship run for the Padres. So I just kind of wonder if. Tony Wynn Jr. had anything to say to Chris Ello, if Chris will share with us, so I'll ask him that. That'll be a question to ask, yeah. for sure, right? Well, SDSU is set to take on the Huskies, and we'll be talking about it all morning long, because you know why? Because that's all anyone's talking about right now. <laughs> all the politics is on the, on the shelf for a little while as yeah. we get ready for a big ball game tonight. Yeah. So Ed Lenderman has been hanging out in Del Cerro uh, with former SDSU men's basketball coach. There he is, Michael Brunker. What a cool photo from back in the day. Hi, Ed. 1985, 1985 assistant Aztecs coach. There he is, right alongside Smokey Gaines. And, and let's give Smokey a little credit. I mean, this program has been building and building and building. And part of that build is this gentleman uh, who came out of Detroit, was the youngest uh, NBA assistant coach in, uh, in the history of the league. I don't want to get too far into the weeds on that because we promised everybody and 
this man knows how to break down a game uh, from what we've been watching. And one of the his and he's also the calmest individual I've ever met. And that includes all of our days covering the Jackie Robinson YMCA. He's been trying to calm me down as well. But let's let's break this down. And the one thing that you said to me when I was going, we can't get 14 down. We can't miss free throws. We can't. There's the deal. OK, in terms of how good uh, the uh, Connecticut ha ha has been, they've had a great run through the tournament. I'm not worried about Connecticut. I'm telling you what, we've got players. These are not just role players. Everybody's got a different responsibility. And I'm very confident that everybody will handle their responsibilities tonight, including making shots. And why do you think that's true, Ed? Why do I think that's true? Because yeah. you told me so. Okay, good. Well, I wish it was because he, even my mentor, Dick Vitale, if you've ever watched Dickie V and you know how he is, he's picking UConn because of what I showed you earlier, this history that yeah. they've talked about. UConn has been to the NCAA tournament. This is their 36th appearance. They've been to, what is it, 18 now, Sweet 16s, 12 five, Elite Eights. In the, in the championship game, this is their fifth appearance. Up to this point, they're 4-0. and oh, But who cares? Okay, that who cares? has nothing to do with what's going on tonight because there's nobody on their roster, there's no one on their coaching staff who has that experience of going to the final game of the NCAA tournament. And, and as I've mentioned all along, it comes down to this. And, and I've coached not only in the NBA and at college and high school in 1974. We won a state championship at Birmingham Brother Rice under the direction of the Hall of Fame coach Bill Norton. But even when I was coaching elementary school, it comes down to three basic things. Number one, you got to run the court. Number two, you got to guard somebody. Number three, you got to make your layups. And so if we continue, and I say continue, because that's why we're in the championship game right now. There was times against Florida Atlantic where they were ripping and running up and down the court, and we matched them. And down at the end of the game, we stopped them to get the turnover or the rebound to come the other way. You know, uh, you got to really defend, and, and then when you do that, you have to, the key is the layups right now. And so probably if there's one area, everybody's talking about the three-point shot, and Matt Bradley nailed several against Florida Atlantic but should we make those shots we miss around the hoop we're gonna blow out Kentucky uh, Connecticut tonight blow out I say a blowout yes. Yes. okay well as I said <laughs> he's very calm about this uh, let's not let it come down to the last 20 seconds well and, and, and even if it does we're ready for that right but I think if you watch the women's game last night uh, you know LSU LSU and, and Iowa I mean look what happened that was a, a route in yeah. itself as well I think right now UConn has been having their way all the way through this tournament they have yet to be challenged like they're going to get challenged tonight yeah it was a Mike Tyson said everybody's got a plan a until you get hit in the mouth and and whatever their scouting report on on us is and I'm sure you know now oh wait they they play defense they defend the three until you're out there until you've got somebody sliding and you beat somebody and the next guy's right there or he's he's quick to you i don't know that they've seen our defense in terms of having to play it and, and it's more than the defense you know I, once again it's they're running the court it's a transition yeah. game okay. right now and, and we can get up and down the court we can shoot the ball we can guard somebody but I think it all goes back to the program and the leadership of Brian Dutch and his coaching staff who've been preparing this team all along. And the Mountain West Conference is not an easy conference, you know, and, and where we play in the altitude and, and at all levels of the game it, against big players, against players that are very outstanding. I mean, Big East it gets a lot of rep, but right now that history, that rep of the Big East, I'm not fearful of this is East against the West, and I think the West is ready to rule. Okay, I'm going to end on that. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't need to sum up anything. He just did it, yeah. and he is calm as a cucumber, and we're all going, oh, my gosh, I wish they were playing now. we got to wait how many hours? Take it easy, Ed. Take it easy. I'm very confident this morning. As he said, it's in his deep, calming voice. Back to you guys. <laughs> Or in radio for sure. Yeah. And yeah. TV. Got to stay calm. All right. Thanks, guys. So now the city has been uh, ringing all weekend after Saturday's win. My goodness. Boy, the Buzz celebration the inside and outside the arena sort of makes you uh, think of what the economic impact is for something like this. It's significant. <laughs> mm -hmm. Allie Wagner, but you're talking more about the emotional impact, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think I can speak as alumni uh, San Diego State that I 
think there is definitely excitement. I know so many people who are at the game that uh, I graduated with and very excited, been keeping in touch um, with them as well as, you know, at, Pretty much even people who are walking by this morning, heading to their workout. We've gotten a few go Aztecs from the students. Of course, they are back from spring break. You can feel the excitement just being around Viejas. So um, that is definitely the case. And I think around town, really, too, you've seen more Aztecs gear than probably ever before. Now we caught up with one of our super fans, Dan Cruz. Here's what he had to say about tonight's big game. 